Don't be somebody you're not. Make sure that you're doing the right things for the right reasons. Welcome to Meet the Voter. Today we have Adam Hopkins, which is our final candidate of the, of the five candidates we've interviewed for sure for Washoe County. Adam, welcome to Timelines. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And Meet the Voter. It's a, a joint program. Before I start, I just want to thank the sponsors. Primarily sponsor is the Republican Men's Club and the Silver Sponsors. They all donated $100, which helps us get a little bit of marketing, get the message out there. So Ed and George Strom, Ray, Car- Ray and um, Carol Rocha, uh, myself and my wife, uh, and Tom Heck for U.S. Senate, one of our more recent people who have donated um, basically $100. We're going to have a breakfast with a VIP, and uh, it just sort of helps augment some of the uh, cost of producing this podcast. Also, I just want to talk. There's a couple ways to listen to this. You can listen on YouTube. You can find a lot of different places, uh, republicanmensclub.org, Meet the Voter, and also Timelines. But on the podcast, you can just Google your name, Adam Hopkins, in a few days, and it will come up, and then you'll find the actual uh, place where all of these interviews are. Perfect. Thank so you. it's kind of nice how iTunes works. So, Adam, that was a long introduction. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got in law enforcement. Um, let's see. I uh, was born in Georgia and moved to Colorado after my father retired from the military. Grew up in Grand Junction, Colorado. And uh, when I graduated from High school, ended up going to New Mexico State University, uh, majoring in education. I have a degree in, in uh, elementary education and went directly into the Air Force. And as soon as I was done with the Air Force, I was in this area and um, was looking for a job and a place to, to uh, put down roots. And my brother lived here. So we moved here. Uh, I started working in the field of mental health, which I had done all through college. And then at one point, I decided that um, that was not something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so I uh, looked back in, into my past as to what uh, I had always shown an interest in, and I always seemed to have shown an interest in law enforcement. So, so, so when the sheriff's office was, uh, was hiring, as was Reno PD, I tested for both of them. And whichever one called me first was where I went, and here I— What year was that? Uh, 1990. So you was right, when I right, and you had a good background with the military yeah. and all that. That's yes, a sir. good, good rounded background. And so you grew up. Uh, you were born in uh, Georgia. I've got to ask you, where in Georgia? Uh, Fort Gordon. Oh, Fort in Gordon. Augusta. Communications. Yeah, I've flown over the top of there many a time. Yeah, signal, my, signal. my father, my father was stationed there. Was he signal by any chance or communications? Uh, no, he was uh, transportation. Yeah, because that's the home of the signal branch and all mm-hmm. that. And I've flown over it. That's where they have the Masters Golf Course. Got yes, a tournament there too. Yeah. So very good. So going on, um, we we'll always like to talk a little bit more about your background in law enforcement and what advice you have for somebody who wants to go in law enforcement. Well, my background in law enforcement, as I said, started in 1990 with Washoe County, and I spent about three and a half years with, uh, in the jail where everyone starts. And then I transferred to the patrol division, and I stayed in the patrol division for almost 12 years, so half of my career was spent uh, there as a deputy and as a supervisor. Uh, in 2005, in 2005, I knew that I wanted to promote again and transferred to the jail because I hadn't been there for 12 years and I knew things had changed. I spent two years running the bailiffs at the courthouse and then in 2008 promoted to lieutenant uh, in the jail. Uh, realized at that point that the jail was where my heart was uh, and that uh, and and that part of law enforcement and uh, so I continued to promote throughout the 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 rank structure uh, in the jail and retired last year or I'm sorry three years ago 2015 um, and uh, so that's that's my career in law enforcement uh, what I do now is um, I'm a, a DOJ auditor for the uh, Prison Rape Elimination Act. It's a very specific federal law. So I audit jails and prisons around the country. I own a training company where I train on high liability topics for law enforcement, law enforcement related fields. I sit on the executive board for the National Alliance on Mental Illness for the state of Nevada. I am their training committee chair. I run a uh, program called the Wandering Prevention Program that helps find 
f- people with uh, 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 cognitive issues if they wander away from their caregivers. And uh, I'm the president of my Lions Club. Busy. We give out you, we give out you, computers to kids. You are busy. You're a volunteer uh, to the nth degree too. I see that in your resume. Y- doing yes, a lot sir. Of work and plus staying busy with all your business. And you have that the base. You've retired. You got to do the second career. Now you're going back to sh- run for sheriff. So, what? Why run for sheriff? Well, there are uh, a lot of changes that are happening in our country, and uh, we're not uh, immune from that. And uh, I am not seeing the sheriff's office moving in the direction that I want it to move, or I think it should move uh, quickly enough uh, in exactly the right ways. And so someone has to go in and and take care of that. Our current sheriff is not running. Uh, It was the perfect time to get in and, and see what and there are some unique do. issues. If you're watching this in the future, we just had the mass shooting down in Florida, and there's a lot of issues right now. Definitely mental illness had to, was involved with that. Absolutely. Shooting. I mean, we don't know for sure, but it, it, <clears> from the outset that most of these mass shootings, they say, there's some deranged individual, which is... Yes. About three years ago, I went to a symposium on race, and every law enforcement leader in Washoe County uh, committed to making mental health their, their number one priority. They said it is the number one issue facing law enforcement now. I have noticed that you are the fifth, so I've noticed that come up with the, the discussion. And we didn't really talk about it. And when you, after the prim, when you get into the primary season, we'll go into more detail, but there's a million questions I'd like to ask you about the homeless. But I really want to stay on the positive side mm-hmm. and focus back into what would you tell a young person who is interested in law enforcement? What should they do? Let's say they're in high school. I would say do some real soul searching because law enforcement is not easy. It never has been easy. It requires sacrifice. Make sure that you are willing to serve because without service, law enforcement uh, it doesn't work. Uh, we have got, gotten away from that in this country, in my opinion, uh, service to others. Um, so make sure that you know what you're getting, getting yourself into. Um, for, for my whole career, uh, I moved vacations, I moved birthdays, I moved holidays. Uh, family was put on hold in some instances, and it, it's a sacrifice. So be willing to do that, and don't, um, do not compromise your values Right now, I've heard that since you're the fifth, I've heard that it is tough. It's tough on the families. So you have to have a good family because it's just as tough on them as it is you, if not tougher at times. Yes, sir. And uh, moving the holidays, birthdays, all that, I've heard that theme come up. So that's, that's maybe the, the good and the bad of law enforcement. There's good and the bad, the service, the duty. But, yes, sir. Uh, very sure. So going on to finish up this first part, I want to ask you, what are some of your toughest times and what are the good times? Well, there are a lot of tough times in law enforcement. Uh, we are not called to people's homes when they're having a really good day. So a lot of these calls that, that we uh, go to are, are tough. Or we, if you're in the jail, people are just automatically going through tough times in their lives. Sometimes it's the most traumatic thing that will ever happen to them. Maybe they've lost their job and they've lost their family and now they've lost their freedom. And all of these things due to their own actions for the most part. But uh, it's it's tough. So if I had to put my finger on it, I would say anytime you lose someone that is close to you, um, I had a very close friend who, who lost his life in the line of duty, and uh, that was probably my worst day. And how did I make it through that? I uh, I leaned on my family. If my family hadn't been there sitting next to me and uh, making sure that I was okay, I, you know, I, I would have, I would not have dealt with it as well. That's, that's so not all tough. What are the good times? Oh my goodness. Probably the best day was when I pinned on that badge because it was the culmination of a lot of hard work, a lot of soul searching, a lot of sacrifice. Uh, the Academy was long. It was not easy. Um, there were injuries, there were questions about whether or not, uh, you know, you'll make it through. Uh, I personally held a full-time job the entire academy, 
So um, it, that when I pinned that badge on, it was probably the proudest day I've ever I've ever had. So that was my best day. Very good, very good. Now I've heard that before. That's a good day to get sworn. Yes, sir. Very good. So we're going to go to a break and thank the sponsors, and then we'll come right back. Are you fed up buying back the data from the big online companies only to find out that they are poor quality, inexpensive leads? Let us help you, the professional real estate agent, build your online fan club from the people in your local community who already know, like, trust you. They need to remember you when it comes to buying and selling that next home. MailRite has developed a powerful online system that keeps you in front of the most powerful referral group, the people in your local sphere of influence who know, like, and trust you. So come on over to MailRite and check out the program. Buying or selling a home in the greater Reno Tahoe area? I know the best CRS real estate broker, and that's Karen Conrad. And you can find her at karenconrad.com or call her directly at 775-527-7021. So Adam, coming back off the break, I just want to say one last thing is if you're listening to this on YouTube, remember you can always go to iTunes and search the name. It's a wonderful time to listen to a podcast when you're driving or doing something else. Uh, that's the whole idea about podcasts. You can just listen to them when you're doing the dishes or jogging or whatever they mm-hmm. might be. So getting into your, the second half here, we're going to always talk about the life success principles, and we're going to start out with what book do you like? Well, there's two books. I brought one. The first one is um, one that is very, very uh, dear to me, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's my Bible. And it's uh, well-worn and um, it gives me a, a roadmap on how to live my life. And so I would highly recommend reading that and uh, uh, studying that. But for those more secular, um, I have a book here that uh, everybody should be reading, and it's called A Miracle That Changed the World, The 5,000-Year Leap, Principles of Freedom. This is a book that um, it really sums up how our country came to be, how our system, uh, how our republic came to be, um, it gives you 28 principles um, of, uh, of, our, of our country, uh, everything from uh, gun rights to um, uh, separation of church and state, all of that. It is a fantastic read, and uh, again, it should be taught in schools, in my opinion. That's, that's wonderful. My daughter uh, is in We the People, and they study the Constitution, and they go and debate and lecture for Reno, and they're actually going to Washington. So we really, my family does get into the discussion, and we look at the different issues. I know for you in law enforcement, the Fourth and Fifth Amendment are super mm-hmm. important, too. Mm-hmm. Search and seizure and the fair trial. Make sure that I get those straight. So very good. So what are three life and success principles? We talked ahead of time. You said service, authenticity, and perspective. And under service, you're talking about family and community. Correct. Uh, I, have a, I have a huge family. I have 10 grandchildren and all of my kids and... Uh, Service to them is is vastly important because um, and for the young people out there, you know your friends may leave you and and your job may leave you and uh, you may change careers three times, but you have the same family and they count on you and you need to be able to count on them and trust them and that's where service uh, to your family comes in. Um, it, it is vitally important to have them behind you every step of the way. You know, one of the negatives in law enforcement is it is tough on families. Yeah, and you see it with uh, young people getting divorced, uh, young deputies, and it's just tough. It has to be the right family. It does, because you're, you're working shift work. You're working uh, uh, a job that is very stressful. A lot of stress. And if you're not able to communicate effectively with your spouse and your children, um, early on in my career, I was accused of treating my kids like, like inmates, <laughs> Don't treat the kids like inmates, you know. And Maybe that's so, advice to the young officer. <clears throat> so evolving. just just be careful how you treat your family, uh, and service to the community. Uh, that is what law enforcement it is. It started as protecting and serving. Protecting uh, can sometimes be the easy part. Service is very very difficult because we go call to call. Uh, we, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, manpower in the jail, and um, so you you end up just doing a lot of protecting and not serving. So authenticity, what's that mean? Don't be somebody you're not. Make sure that you're doing the right things for the right reasons. Um, so just being an authentic person. Um, if, if you say you're going to do something, 
Go out and do that thing or do your best to do that. And if you make a mistake, be authentic and say, I made a mistake and I, I did my best, but let's try again. Yeah. That's what, that's what yeah, authentic Everyone makes mistakes. Makes. You just don't want to make that catastrophic mistake. Well, nobody wants to make that mistake. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, be willing to say I'm sorry. Right. Very good. And perspective. Uh, don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, understand that uh, we are all human. Uh, it doesn't matter what call you go on or, or what group of inmates you're dealing with or your, or your family. We are all human, and we all deserve to be treated uh, as such. Uh, if you start putting yourselves above the people you serve, that is a recipe for disaster. Being selfless. Selfless. Yes. That's exactly it. One of the uh, things that I am going to push when I'm elected sheriff is servant leadership. We need to serve those that, that work for us. They're the ones out doing the job. And we need to recognize them and uh, let them know that they're not, uh, their efforts aren't, aren't going unnoticed. Uh, we have not done a great job with that over the years throughout my career. Well, I want to tell you, every candidate that I've interviewed is just second to none. So you guys are, are the very best of the best and appreciate, well, appreciate your service. That. And law enforcement, 99%. Are, are, are have those characteristics of service and duty. No, no question. It's a tough career, but a very rewarding career. It is. So going on, how can the listener reach you and find you? You've got a wonderful website. We'll talk about that for Well, a second. thank you very much. You can call me on my cell phone, uh, which is 775-691-8199. I carry it on me all the time. You can go to my website, which is hopkinsforsheriff.com. You can email me at adam at hopkinsforsheriff.com. I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can uh, look me up on Twitter and uh, uh, Instagram and YouTube. So that's how you can get a hold of me. So I'm going to talk about your website for a couple seconds. I think you're going to win the website award for the most modern, modern website. It's definitely a modern, cutting-edge website. Uh, very nice website. A lot Thank of you. information on it. It is hopkinsforsheriff.com. You can also Google that. And you rotate these pictures. Tell us about your family here. This is your family. You have a daughter who's pregnant here. You got some grandkids. You got more yeah. kids. A lot of kids. I have th I have three grown children, all with families, all with with children. I am the bo most blessed candidate in this race, in my opinion. Uh, if not the most blessed man uh, around, they are all so supportive. Uh, it was my birthday the other day, and they were all there. Uh, it is just incredible to have a family like that. Very good. So you've got a lot of information on this site. Yes, um, sir. To find out more about it, probably go to that site and read up. And you can also donate. I know you need donations. Every candidate needs donations, folks, out there. Yes, we do. Yes, a, I do. It's Don't a ignore the donate button. Yeah. For all five of you guys, it's a sacrifice to run. Yes, sir. I know it's tough. It's tough, just like in law enforcement. It's tough to run. And should you make sheriff, you don't know what you're in for. It's a tough business there, too. Uh, I can imagine. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure it is. Uh, sheriff Allen would probably... Best person to talk about that now. He's just gone through his four years. Yes, sir. So in finishing up, we want to talk about why you like Sparks Reno and where are some of the good places to go eat around here. Let's see. Why do I like Sparks and Reno? I love the weather here. It is, uh, it is not too snowy, <laughs> we just said snowy although I grew up in Colorado. It's not too snowy. Uh, there's a lot of sunshine. There's just n not a day when you really can't go outside and do something. Uh, depending on what your interests are. It's, it's just wonderful. We're so close to Lake Tahoe and uh, just everything that goes along with that. Um, I'm very encouraged by the uh, community and how they are coming together uh, to deal with different problems, uh, breaking down silos. Uh, that is just huge in my book and, and something that I focus on. So that's why I, I love being where I'm at. Um, so, so we're coming here to Reno, Tahoe, mm -hmm. Reno, Tahoe, Sparks, everywhere. Mm -hmm. you know? Where are some places to go eat? Well, there's one place you can't go, but it's the best food. <laughs> it is the absolute best food in Reno or Sparks, and it's my house. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the address, but uh, my wife is the best cook I've ever, I've ever seen. Um, so what's her, what's her favorite food? Which, which plate do you like best? Oh, my goodness. Her chicken and rice oh, sounds good. is my absolute favorite, but there are many others. Uh, but as far as in the community, uh, we, we frequent so many restaurants. Um, it's hard. You know, you're not one of 
0.1%. percent we got to tell us a couple if you come oh, here. Oh, geez. Let's see. How about um, the lake? The lake. I've never heard of the lake. Where's it's, the lake? It's, it's out in Spanish Springs okay. in the uh, Save Mart uh, yep. shopping center out there. We like the lake. Uh, we like uh, Pegs. Pegs. Pegs is well known. Pegs is winning awards here. Uh, Pegs is a great yeah. place to go. And they've got something new out there. They have a new Pegs, don't they? They do. They yeah. do. Now, I, I also like a really good steak. And the other night we went to Sterling's. Oh, Sterling's. And Sterling's was really, really good. Reno is actually known for good steakhouses. It's so fantastic. So if you said Sterling's, that's, that means something. Yeah, we have good steak here at a reasonable we price do. most places. Yes, we steak. do. Very good. Well, I want to thank you, for Adam, for coming today. And you're the fifth one. And you'll be the end. You'll be the last one of these series. And that, so I guess that's good to be the end, the front and the back. Yep. So yep, thank you. Fine. Well, and thank you so good much. Good luck on your race. And should you win, it. I look forward to having you back. Oh, not win the primary because you have another election after this. Right. Not just one, but probably two. Yes, sir. This many people. So. Yes, sir. Good luck. I plan on being there. Take care. Thank you very much. Law enforcement and public safety is the first priority of government. I really encourage the listener to go out and study each of these candidates, watch their individual interviews, and watch the 2018 Washoe County Sheriff's Debate, which was sponsored by the RMC. I also want to thank the Republican Men's Club for their gracious support of Meet the Voter, and specifically the Silver Sponsors for all they do and their generous contributions. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead and if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail, go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV. You can go over here, watch a couple more videos, link to our website at republicanmensclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.